November 8, 2020, the day I unknowingly started a long journey which would end up leading me to experiences and adventures I never expected to witness by attempting to bring my vast amounts of Pokemon designs into the fan game sphere, which started out poorly, but day by day, year by year, until the present with way more higher level art compared to before, let's start from the beginning and see how I got to the point where I am right now and how my art has progressed across these four years. So, what was the reason which caused me to even start attempting to go down this path? Well, like I already mentioned in the intro, from a way earlier year that could date back to 2014 or 2015, one day when I was slacking off in art school, I decided to visualize what could be my rendition of the starting Pokemon choices for yet another Pokemon adventure, which ended up looking a little bit something like this. Yeah, I was only able to find a grass starter, the rest are probably huffing the biggest amount of dust in some place that the sun doesn't shine anymore, but that's beside the point. After killing an hour in what seemed to be like 5 minutes, I got addicted to making more and more and more and way too much designs for the next few years, up until that point that I easily outpaced Game Freak with a thousand designs way before them. But before I could make more Fakemon than there is done toxic Pokemon fans, a brilliant idea popped in my head. What if I actually made them usable in a Pokemon game? Yeah, big shocker to little me back then. But instead I learned what fighting off more than you can chew felt like for the first time as well. So it balanced back out in the end. After researching and finding out how long and tedious the process is, Instead of just some magic buttons that automatically does everything for you, I quickly got overwhelmed even before attempting, so I decided to scrap that project. For about a year or two, where I somehow only then hit artist's block for the first time and decided to hide away from my problems by actually giving this ROM hacking thing a go. So yeah, after my first few attempts of trying to make the fire starter, you clearly can see that besides the highly saturated puke of a sprite, there wasn't that much to be stoked about. After being disappointed in my first few tries at the difficult beast, a little light bulb went off in past me's head. What if I just took pictures of my Pokemon? downscaled them to slightly adjust and reconfigure them. As it turns out, the bulb wasn't as bright as I initially expected it to be. Either the colors and details ended up super muted, had somehow less consistency and actual resemblance of a fan-made design than the previously made lava puke something that looked like it was accidentally left in a trouser's pocket and put into the washing machine or everything altogether. On top of that, of course I had multiple bugs and glitches when trying to hack it into Pokemon Emerald, so that was the moment I knew. There's no way around it. Either I actually start attempting to do the real and authentic way, or just give up right here, right now. Well, as you already see, we still have plenty of time left in the video, so I'm more than sure you know the answer. After the initial failures of my first pokes at a 2D sprite art beast, I knew I just had to, well, practice. Seeing it as the best option for the continuation of my learning experience, 
with minuscule looks at tutorials, which in hindsight was a poor decision, your dear old narrator here decided to just keep bashing his head into the wall by constantly going at remaking and creating 2D art of the already made Pikmon designs I had collecting dust in an ice cream tray. What a vibe, right? In a Pokedex format, one by one, I went ahead and started to work on the sprites with a motivator, being the thought of using them as Pikmon for a future Romac in mind. With each sprite made, I gained insight and ideas on how to improve for the next one. Minimal shifts between shadows make the contrast between them bigger. Outlines barely contributed to increasing the polish for the sprite. Just take a moment to study how they work on the official sprites and attempt to repeat it myself. Light seemed way off compared to the real deal. Research the methods of how to apply lighting and imagine how it would also work in the real world and so on. Near 100 sprites later, I was finally semi-competent to make regional variants for existing sprites. Though my own Pikemon, still some ways to go, though definitely an improvement. With a bit more time until the last days of 2021, you could definitely see the progress with some of the sprites I made. Like this Pikemon I named as Quake Zero. And now that I started to finally get into the groove and feel like the sprites I was making were becoming more and more closer to the real deal, I actually kind of got way too addicted to spriting. Even getting commission work here and there done, in result getting way more experience and increase of quality due to consistent feedback in a more professional setting. With a sea of sprites done, and many more to come for the foreseeable future, while also making a random YouTube channel on June 30th, 2021, that's currently being used as a transition, what big changes could actually come and change the flow? With a bigger channel than I already expected to have at that point, Yet starting to feel understandably bad about the somewhat low effort content I was making at the time, an idea formed for me to try and implement the thing I was still learning into uploads on my channel as an attempt to provide something actually unique. But to spice it up and make it more worthy of watching instead of the regular static sprites, a whole new different style of video was uploaded on September 1st, 2022. On this fateful day, I uploaded my first ever video on my channel, in which was a short video about me remaking some of the cut beta Pokemon. Not only was it the first time I truly dabbled and started creating Gen 5 style sprites, but also the day I fully started to convert into the content I make today. But of course, the very first time back in 2019 is more important to me due to starting, well, all of this. But an easy second pick is definitely this day. From this point onwards, I started out by creating small simple loops with minuscule shifts in movement, while also simplifying the process of shading by just pretty much applying shadows at the exact same spots where they were for the original sprites. But the biggest offense in my and probably many other eyes was the violation of not even being close with matching the colors compared to how they are in the official Pokemon black and white sprites especially on the saturation point. With all the beta Pokemon design remaking videos I was making at the time, I guess you could say I made sprites in a beta version of the Gen 5 art style, eh? Yeah, I think it's better if we move on from that. 
Marching through the pixel field for years of progression for my art style, how has this experience affected and contributed to the way I make my sprites today? Well, if you have seen any of my recent videos, or even have just taken a look at some of my thumbnails, I'm sure that observation has helped you put together an opinion quite effortlessly. Though what do I have to say for my own work and its advancements? Seeing how going from rough, rigid movements to much more fluent and multi-layered tactics at creating animated sprites I started to do, while also expanding the field of what style of sprites I have started to make, by also making portrait style sprites for trainers and Pokemon alike compared to the now cliché Deep Fried Lava Puke Sprite I made as the very first art, yeah, I guess I've gotten a bit better at it. I mean, if we go by the rule of it takes 10,000 hours to master something, which converts to 416 days, I would say it could be true in this scenario. Of course, there are many things I still could improve upon. For example, making the animation much more closer to the real deal, or improving upon my palating skills for the colors. Though where would be the fun in being truly perfect in something? So I'll take the gripes I have with my own work, and I'll use them as a motivator for improving and moving onwards with stride. But if we just scale the discussion a bit down back to the main topic, and with a more detailed scope on it, just how much has all of it changed? Well, while a bit of a comparison slideshow goes on the screen, let's ponder on it just a little bit more. For static sprites, the biggest and best improvements I would say are figuring out much better tactics and ideas for how to color and create the outlines, while also adding lighting into the count with much better highlights and appealing shadows, making patterns, details and other things on the body work much better also helped quite a lot, which by instead of giving everything a black outline, I used darker shades of colors that appear on the body as more appealing outlines, or tones that work perfectly as a middleman for transitions between colors to not hurt the eyes as much. Although all of these technically apply to the static and animated sprites both, the thing that helped me greatly was getting the sizes of sprites on a much better scale making them much more compact not only helped me reduce the amount of spriting I needed to do, but also simplified the animating process and made the shading work much better by not having as much blank, single colored spots. As for something more animated sprite focused, the method of making multiple layers for each body part separately initially always sounded as a much more tiresome style of animation, but when I finally got around to doing it, not only it actually ended up speeding up the process, but it also helped with making the sprites feel way more authentic. On the side though, there are some other miscellaneous stuff like the already mentioned portraits and other sprites such as overworld or trainer sprite works, but I haven't done them as much to warrant a comparison, though here are some slim pickings that I guess have changed across the years. But with that said, what can we take away from this video? All in all, that's the final judgment that we lay upon this 4 year trip of me learning how to pleasantly put pixels together. And what's the best advice I can give to aspiring spriters that wish to follow a similar path? Well, one thing is for certain, no matter how confident or sure you feel that you'll figure out the correct technique that will guide you to a successful outcome, 
do not disregard the helpfulness and positive effect that tutorials of any kind can leave upon the task you have taken up to achieve. If you asked me what was my biggest regret, or what would I have done differently instead after knowing the outcome and how long it took to get to this point in the way I was making art, I, with the most confidence I've ever had, would say to give various topical and relevant tutorials in regards to spriting a shot. Like, look at it from this perspective. The worst thing that could happen would be just hearing something you already knew, or learning that you're really not that interested in spriting after all. Which would be better than struggling with something you never were truly passionate about in the first place. So, if you're interested, I would suggest starting with the tutorial I made a while ago, and also this amazing tutorial by Soultunes if you are more interested about pixel art in general. Though you definitely can learn some cool tricks from it as well. Anyways, I guess that's pretty much it. I kind of ended up spinning off to speaking about advice rather than the main point which was advertised, so to make up for it, here's a small compilation for some of my biggest changes and advancements in my art for those who are still here watching. I cherish that more than you can imagine. Even if I barely reach a thousand people for just a few minutes, I'm glad that I managed to even leave an impression on at least someone. So truly, thank you. But yeah. Uh, that pretty much does it for the video, check out the subscribe button that lit up right now, and stay tuned for more. See ya!